and I welcome uh, everybody that's online that's joining us. Uh, we're going to have uh, Jim and Michelle uh, Axelson tells us about the, how God is using the Wycliffe Bible translators around the world. Uh, let us begin tonight. We're going to sing hymn 255, At the Cross, At the Cross. And we'll sing all the verses. It's not a long one here. And it will be up there. That's right. So much for hymn books. All right. Um, we'll do the first three verses. Okay. First three. That's to help Dave. Okay. All right. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign open up and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're praising Jesus tonight. We thank you that, that you did come, you did die, that our sins are wiped clean. And Lord, that through that, that we might be able to approach the throne and through the resurrection, Lord, that we have that hope of life eternal. Lord, we are here tonight praising Jesus and it will take all of eternity praising him. Uh, to even come close to knowing what he has done for us. Lord, I, I pray you be with our service tonight. Lord, as we hear this report from Jim and Michelle, Lord, that uh, we, might be, we might come to an understanding, a better understanding of what the need is to reach the lost, not only here but around the world. And Lord, I just pray that your hand be upon them as they bring the message and as they uh, give us this report. And Lord, that through it all, Jesus might be glorified. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, just a few words before I hand it over to Jim and Michelle. You have your uh, prayer guides there. And... Uh, and church, if you are online and listening, it should have been emailed to you. I do remind you of those uh, prayer needs uh, that are in there. Certainly pray through it during the week. Also be mindful of the announcements that we have at the front, and that's our fall festival coming up. It's a month away, a month away, five Sundays from now. And uh, that's our... We haven't done one in a couple of years. We haven't done VBS in a couple of years. It's uh, because of COVID, we've all drawn into ourselves and it is high time 
that we get outside of these walls and we start reaching uh, this community for Jesus. And the way we do this, and this, yes, it's a fall festival, there's lots of candy and games, but it starts by building relationships building relationships people don't care about what you know until they first know that you care and this is us showing care for our community and this is so important so important i ask you to keep this a matter of prayer as we uh, uh, as we get closer to that time um, i want to introduce uh, uh, Jim and Michelle, uh, those of you in the Niceville area, uh, we always relate to them by how you used to know them. They're, uh, uh, they're former residents of this uh, community, and many of you remember the Sunlight Bookstore. And this is what they had operated for many, many years. But uh, since, uh, was it 2004, you started working with Wycliffe Bible Translators. Uh, they have been overseas in Papua New Guinea, and, uh, and now they're working at their home office in, in Orlando. Uh, I know, Michelle, you're doing, doing a lot of travel, getting ready to do a lot more to, from what Jim has told me, and uh, uh, that they're supporting their operations around the world. And uh, Jim, Michelle, why don't you go ahead and come on up. Come on up and, and tell us about uh, uh, the Wycliffe Bible Translators. God bless you. To get started, we were going to show a quick video, so we'll let that happen first. We've become accustomed to a world where all our needs are met, where nearly everything we could ever want is literally at our fingertips. Food, water, shelter, clothing. We take some things for granted For us, they've always been there. But what if we didn't have these things? How would it affect our daily lives? It's the same with the Bible. It's our guiding light, showing us the only way to live in a right relationship with God. But what if it wasn't there? What would our lives be like without the Bible? For millions of people in the world, this is still their daily reality. There's not a single word of scripture translated into a language they can clearly understand. That's why Wycliffe exists. At this moment, all around the world, we're working with local churches and communities to speed the light of truth to people still waiting. Because when people get the Bible in their language, they can know the life-giving truth of the good news. They can fully grasp who God is and what Jesus has done for them. They can experience the hope and transformation of God's Word. It's a movement of global proportions, and we won't stop until every person on the planet can access the Bible in a language and format they can clearly understand. Let me say, can you go to the next slide, please? First, let me say thank you for being here and allowing us to be here and share with you. Uh, we want to thank your pastor for inviting us. Um, 
as Doug said, we were lived in Niceville for many years. I left the Air Force out of Eglin. I knew Doug. Uh, can I call him Pastor Doug or Doug? A uh, long time ago when we were both in the Gideons. That's how we got connected. So um, we've had quite a history here. We did have sunlight. Michelle ran sunlight most of the time. But it was a great time in this area for us to be nurtured because you don't, you don't know how much this area has offering you to understand who God is until you leave it. Okay, so it's a real opportunity to be here to be nurtured. In fact, when we first joined Wycliffe, from our knowledge of the churches we attended here, we could test, did a test and we didn't have to go to Bible school because of that, because we had learned enough in, in, in church to pass that. So it was, was a great time for us on our way to becoming missionaries. And um, I guess, um, you know, you look back differently, don't you? you something about getting older, and there, there are some hard parts about this. Um, I think part of the, the warranty starts falling off at 40 about some of the health things. But, but you look back, and you have a lot of appreciation for what God has built into your life. And we are so grateful for this community, for the friendships, just for um, just the the exposure to the Word of God in so many ways and the welcoming that that had. Um, for those of us of you who know our children, um, David's the one holding the grandbaby. Um, grandbaby's Aaliyah. She'll be a year old in a few days. But um, David now lives in Texas. He works at the village church there as an IT guy. His wife is Twyla. She's a missionary kid for the Phil grew up in the Philippines. And then Rachel and her husband, Ben, live in Columbus, Ohio, and she's working as an ER nurse. And um, no, no grandbabies yet, but they're considering, so we're good. <laughs> but um, just, just for those who know the family, um, I know we've known some of you guys for a while. So um, just as we look back over um, just the blessings of this community, we do want to say thank you. We know that we have had your support and prayers even from the time we were getting ready to go. Certainly, Doug and Ellen, as we were looking at missions, and, and Doug had spent time in Indonesia and just helped us think through things and thinking about working in the Pacific. And, you know, it, it really is a huge blessing to live in a Christian community. And we just don't take that lightly. So as we think back on our journey, we thought it'd be kind of interesting, and go to the next slide, please. Um, when we first joined Wycliffe, there was about 380 million people in the world that had no scripture. In their okay? language. In a language that they understood. Their heart language, as we call it. Um, and that was 2004. So that wasn't that long ago. But you see here some numbers here, and we want to talk about it. And you can see the representation, the little beads and, and the, the glasses to kind of give you a visual picture of it. In fact, we'll get to that, but yes. Um, I'm just going to show them the size of the beads yeah. so that they can get the picture, because I didn't bring the beads, but they're pony beads. Okay. So there's three numbers there. There's 6.3 billion, 1.3 billion, and 170 million. We're going to talk about those numbers because we want to praise God for what he's done. Okay. Yes, there's need out there. We're going to talk about it, but we also want to, for you to understand God's moved. Remember I said it was 380 million people when we first joined that had no scripture? These numbers represent a lot, a lot of work that's been done that God has done. Next, please. 6.3 billion. Well... You can see what that says it is. That's the people now that actually have the Bible around the world. The, com the full Bible. The full Bible. And that also includes the first ever full sign language Bible in American Sign Language. Okay. Next, please. 1.3 billion people around the world have some part of Scripture in a language that they understand. In their heart language which is pretty amazing. It's kind of the ongoing work. It's, it's the stuff we're working in and the stuff that other Bible translation organizations are working in. Next, please. So the, one, the 170 million, that's the people that don't have the scripture now. 
So from 2004, when it was 380 million, to now, it's down to 170 million. God is really working and moving around the world using our organization, using our folks, and using others in the broader Bible translation movement. So it's not just us doing it. But it's Next slide, it's please. us and the Whoops. prayers and you know together sorry. the body of Christ. You wanted to go back one. Yeah, we want to go back. Can we go back one? I'm sorry, I said next too soon. There we go. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So um, just unpacking it just a little bit. If you look at that red jar, now each of the beads represents one million people. So it's a lot of people. Um, a billion's just a lot of millions, isn't it? So. But if you think about it being people, it's people and families and communities and nations that have access to the Word of God. And as this has happened, I mean, I remember praying as a small child for missions. And look at the fruit. And the fruit of that, and the reason these numbers are going down faster, is because those who have heard are growing in the Lord, they've been disciple, and they're reaching out. And so, uh, who remembers the old Breck commercial? And they told two friends, and they two, two. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, it's growing because God is bringing more workers of the harvest as a result of the seeds that have been planted and that are growing. And it's just, it is a wonderful thing. And um, I'm really excited. That, um, the first sign language Bible, the American Sign Language Bible, really this time in history because it's a video Bible. You know, it's sign language, right? So you have to see it. And the deaf, you know, worldwide, if you took that as a single people group, and it's not because there's like over 300 sign languages, but if you took it as only 3% of the deaf are evangelized. If that was a people group, that would be one of the least evangelized people groups on the planet. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But one of the things that's exciting about this first Bible being done is there are two main areas. One that we're looking at is the Caribbean, that the sign language in the Caribbean is very much like American Sign Language. So we're hoping by using that as a source, it will go a lot faster for those languages. But the other area of the world where American Sign Language is connected is French West Africa which I never knew before, but I've got a new fellow on my team who's been researching, he's deaf, and apparently American Sign Language originated with some um, French um, missionaries in West Africa, and so a lot of those sign languages are related as well. So we're hoping that to be able to do each of those areas more quickly because they're related and they will have this as a, as a source text mm -hmm. to start with. The yellow, let me talk about the yellow. That's people that have some scripture in a language that, that touches their heart, that they think in, that they dream in, if you will. And it's interesting how much technology has changed that too. Um, there's a lot of work being done right now with the broader Bible translation movement, and we'll talk a little bit more about partnerships in a bit, but partnering with others to do oral Bible translations. A lot of cultures out there don't have written language. So, so we can take the time to come up with a written language for them, teach them how to read, and then give them a Bible. Or we can first start with translating the Bible orally for those cultures that that's what they do. They sit down and they story about their history. And they, oh, they know that. So, all those people, until we get the written language, would be dying off not hearing God, not hearing his salvation message. So let's start with oral. So that's been a movement that's really made a difference by translating it orally. Then you move into written later on. All those people can hear it without having to learn to, to read their own language first. That's been a major change in technology. The other thing that's kind of cool is what's going on around the world is... Um, and just to bring it into a, a, a modern example, okay? I'm sure we all heard what's going on in Afghanistan. A lot of people there, a lot of people fleeing. Well, uh, partnering with some of the people working there, um, 
scripture's been translated into the couple of languages in that country, and, and apps have been created for them to be able to download the Bibles in their language. Well, let's talk about using Google a little bit here. Everyone sees Google. Well, a partner found out that they can advertise on Google to those languages, specifically in this case the ones in Afghanistan, that nobody's trying to sell their products to, like we get all the ads in Google, for really cheap. I mean, less than five cents a person, <laughs> okay? So a lot of advertising was done for people in Afghanistan who will not have access to the word anymore, especially those that are fleeing the, the surrounding countries to avoid what was going on, to be able to download the Bible in their language. And when people see ads and somebody marketing to them in their language, they're more likely to at least check it out. So, I mean, that's a technology that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, oh, that's terrible. Well, there's ways of claiming that back to God, too, and that's being done. So it's amazing how some of that's spreading. Mm -hmm. You want to add to that? Or? Well, I was going <laughs> to say, um, I expect there may be some folks from Afghanistan who show up here. Yeah. They have friends here. They have people they've worked with and served. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we'd like to encourage you is, to, um, and we can help you connect, but if you're going to be trying to reach out to folks who speak a different language, we might be able to help connect you to where you can find audio scripture in that language or written scripture in that language in order to be part of that communication. Um, we have an opportunity as a church to love on some people who've gone through some really tough stuff. And, um, you know, I don't know how you feel about immigration, but, um, you know, we've been praying for these unreached people for a long time. If they show up on our doorstep, I, I hope the church gives them the opportunity to know Jesus. Yeah, it, it really is a, a, an opportunity. So um, the green, down from 380 million to 170 million and wonderful, but that's 170 million souls. You know, men, women, children, who could go into eternity in any moment without knowing the Lord. And that matters. Relatively now, as you look at the picture, we actually have those jars, but I didn't bring them tonight. The green looks like a smaller pile, but it does matter. And most of those, they're the last languages because there's challenges like the deaf, because until the technology was available, even to, to do the, they're, they're using anime and all kinds of stuff um, to do this. The technology is now available to do this more easily, where it wasn't even 10 years ago. Um, some of these are closed countries. We are working closely with disciple making movements, with church planning movements. We are not gonna go blend in and we're not gonna be welcome in a lot of these places but we are partnering with folks who are able to do this. But one of the things I say is in the back, in the little um, turtle bowl, are some green beads. I'd like to just ask you to each take a bead, put it on your keychain as a reminder to pray for those who don't have God's word. Just think about what your life would be like without God's word. And also some of the ones in the yellow bucket, because a friend of mine recently, um, from, from YWAM actually created this visual and basically took the New Testament and everything that was a direct quote from the Old Testament, he whited it out. And then everything that like referenced the Old Testament, he did it in a light type. And then when you look at it, you, you just realize how much, if you don't know the Old Testament, how much you lose of understanding the New Testament. It's rather amazing. Hebrews is like really blank. I mean. <laughs> I mean, it, it matters. And if you think about the stories we teach our children, what do we, I mean, to not have Daniel or David or Moses, or, you know, the, the heroes of the faith, to Joshua, to not have stories about Esther to share with children. I mean, how much richness we lose. So we are finding that those who, as they have the New Testament and they're being discipled and starting churches, they want the Old Testament. And of course they do. And we're trying to help them do the translation and be prepared to do a good quality translation. So um, if we could switch to the next slide, please. 
I want to talk a little bit about how we're working. And um, Wycliffe U.S. has made a firm commitment and a growing commitment that we are working through partnership with the global church. And currently we're working in, um, it's actually 695 language communities doing Bible translation. And that went up by over 100 this past year, even in the midst of the pandemic. And as I said from that red bucket, God is raising up more of his church to share in this ministry. And what we are finding is by working, depending on each other more across organizations and churches globally, that we are actually more effective than if we as Wycliffe US put our own person in each spot. We have partners who are sharing our mission. They don't work for us, we don't work for them, but we depend on each other. And it has helped us work better on my team, I have um, the director of a Wycliffe organization in Benin, Africa. I just went to visit him a couple months ago. He is much better qualified to help speak into our how we work in French-speaking Africa than I would be, no matter how many years I lived on the ground. So really this partnership of supporting each other has been, and for us, we connect them to the global church with the U.S. church, and there's just so much benefit in working together. But God is raising up his church. You know, we've prayed for workers for the harvest, right, for how many years? And God has answered. And it's really interesting how, I guess we should know the body of Christ, but how cool it is to work together, everyone with their gifts. And it's been a real blessing. I want to give you the example. Um, how many of you are familiar with YWAM? Youth with a Mission. So Youth with a Mission looks different everywhere, to be honest. It, it, it's got quite a bit of variety. But um, for the last, since 2009, they've had an initial called End Bible Poverty Now, with the goal to make sure everyone had scripture by 2020. Now, we didn't get to 2020 with them, but as they've realized that they had hurdles, they realized that the hurdle was that there was not translated scripture for some of these folks. And so prayerfully, they have entered into doing Bible translation, specifically oral Bible translation. But they have come to the other Bible translation organizations that said, help prepare our people to do this well. Come, let's do it together. And they have an initiative called Bible, Oral Bible Translation 1000, OVT 1000, where they have committed to reach a thousand of the unreached languages that are remaining between now and 2025. And just this month on the 24th, they started training in seven different places around the world. They have a bases in 168 of 169 countries. I mean, they're just everywhere. <laughs> and um, over 200 speakers of the languages that are still on our list of unengaged, which is pretty amazing. So they've committed and they've started training and from now into December, they will be training and their training has been designed and supported by about five or six different Bible agencies, including Wycliffe US. So just the body of Christ working together. When I was in, um, in Benin, I was traveling with the, just, um, the gal who helped develop the course for YWAM and talking to their bases and helping to present that. But we also went to visit my teammate in Benin, because Wycliffe Benin is helping to train three of the YWAM consultants because, and they're having them as facilitators in their Bible translation projects, in their oral training. So you have a Wycliffe organization in Benin training YWAM people from Togo to work in the wider YWAM Bible translation initiative, which is really exciting. And it's Wycliffe US and a couple others working on training these folks to be good quality consultants. And of that, it's a seven language project, five of those are oral and four of them have YWAM people. Two of the other YWAM trainees are actually working in Vietnam for the, working with the Bible Society of Vietnam, helping to do Old Testament consulting as part of their training. So it just, it's really a neat season where the body of Christ across organizations are working together in new ways. 
And for me, that's incredibly exciting. It's, um, you know, in John 17, you know, Jesus talks about how, how people will know we belong to him. And a lot of it's that unity and in, in unity in Christ and being willing to serve one another and to serve the churches. Along that line, there, we've talked technology a lot. I talk technology a lot because that's what I currently do for Wycliffe. I work in the IT department at Wycliffe. And just recently, there's an organization out there called Every Tribe, Every Nation, or E10, most of us call it, and that's the acronym for it. You might know them as Illuminations, okay? And that's 10 organizations, uh, Wycliffe, uh, Bible Societies. Um, Biblica. Biblica, which is, yeah. American Bible Mer Society. American Bible Society, go ahead. SIL. SIL. Lutheran Bible Translator. Pioneer Bible Translators. Mm -hmm. A number of organizations <laughs> have gotten together to create this E10. Well, their website has been, been in the past, and their donation stream been managed by another company. Well, they just asked Wycliffe to take over the technology of that. So, like, as of November, we will be taking care of their technology needs. And that's what I'll be involved in in my department. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's another way we're, we're collaborating together, which is kind of cool. I mean, what I do currently for Wycliffe may not be like the, the exciting part of missions, you know what I mean? Because I'm sitting behind a computer most of the time. But the software that my team takes care of is how all the donations go through Wycliffe, get processed, to go to the field to get the work done. Without that, it wouldn't happen. So I mean, all of those kind of things, it's interesting the kind of jobs that are needed to make a translation happen. It's not just those that go and those that translate. There's a lot of other parts that have to come together to actually get the work done. The behind the scenes stuff that a lot of people don't know happen, all have to happen. Um, and probably the biggest invisible piece is prayer. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. But, but, but nothing happens unless we're praying right. and God moves. Right. Along those lines, and I'll be totally honest here, I'm going to recruit you. Okay? My team right now that takes care of this big software package for Wycliffe is including myself five people. I currently have 23 projects I could be doing to make that software better. Obviously, I can't do that with five people. So Wycliffe takes volunteers. You don't have to be full-time with them, okay? They ask you to commit to 10 hours a month to be a volunteer. There's a process to go through, but this area here has lots of IT folks. Some may have a day or two that they may be available to help. Consider something like that. There are other aspects of those those kind of volunteer things that can happen that you all could get involved in right away. Okay, well, it takes, there is a process. I mean, we don't just take, they get, there is a process to make sure the church agrees and, you know, you're standing in the church and things like that happen. But, I mean, there's a lot of folks in this area that I know personally, because it's my age group that are starting to retire now. What are you going to do with your life when you retire? You going to sit around all day? Nah. Because, you know, most people can't do that. They're going to want to work. Well, maybe you can volunteer to do stuff like that with us or with other organizations. Okay, there is lots of work to do there. And when people sometimes think of missionaries, they just say, "Oh, I have to go all over this place." No, there's lots of work that can be done from where you are. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention, and this is a little bit aside, in our time in Papua New Guinea, um, one of the great things we got to do was I see the the shoebox boxes out there that you guys are doing. We got to do the other side of that. And that was a really exciting time. Now, I'll be honest, it didn't happen at Christmas, okay? Not every time anyway. By the time we got the shoe boxes, we got to go to a village in Papua New Guinea and give them out. That was an amazing time, okay? Um, so I appreciate the mm -hmm. fact that you all are doing that. Yeah, and I, I will tell you, at least in the villages in Papua New Guinea, the more remote ones, you know, sometimes here, kids are not quite as impressed with some of the toys than as, as you might <laughs> hope they would be. But the, the favorite toy in most villages is a stick with a tin can that the kids are rolling along. 
And so the kind of things that come in a shoebox really are pretty special in those places. And just the idea that somebody cared enough to send it matters. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I, I, if you could, if you if you hand it to maybe your average third grader here, <laughs> they might not be as excited. But let me tell you, the kids um, in these communities really do appreciate these things. Okay. Uh, along the lines with kids here and maybe some adults, we've talked a little bit about. Uh, sign language in the Bible and sign language. Um, Wycliffe has this, this children's program. They do a lot of curriculum with it called Kate and Mac. And this just came out before we came here. And I thought it'd be interesting. I, we printed a few and put them there, and you're welcome to have one. But it's on sign language. It, so you could actually give this to your kid, your grandkids, and say, hey, you want to look at something. That's pretty cool. It talks a little bit about sign language, but on the back, it has the signs for the different letters of the American Sign Language. So if you're ever interested in that, to figure out, well, maybe I could learn a little bit, please take one, okay? They're in the back, and um, you can feel free to copy them as much as you need to, okay? You wanna do that? Your card, yeah. Oh. Yeah, also back with the, the little tray of beads and the sign language sheet is our prayer card, and um, we, we do appreciate your prayers. Someone had our one from our last visits from outside, so I, um, I'm glad they're still here and um, pray that you would take one. We, we like the idea of living on people's refrigerators and being prayed for. Um, as mentioned, I, I travel a fair amount, and um, really in May, June, I, I, I had my first trip to Africa and in the COVID time. This is all, kind of new. I got used to the Pacific. That was familiar. I'm going some less familiar places and COVID makes it a little different. So I um, really do appreciate your prayers. Um, and then just prayers for our, our team, our partnerships. You know, Satan loves to get his foot into things and, um, and cause disruption. And so we, we need prayer. We need wisdom. Um, God has been very gracious to us and we celebrate that but we don't take it for granted either. Next slide, please. So with that verse up there, we just like that verse. And, um, there's lots of different things around the world and you can taste and see all that's up in there, okay? So we thought we'd, uh, we've got some time yet, which is good. So we have, we'd love to take questions. Um, I thought we should be back over by the microphone so people could hear better, but. So are there any questions, things that we, you'd like to know that we can answer or? Sure. I have one question. Uh, you were talking about, you know, we get folks from different places around the world, especially with Aglin. We get mm -hmm. uh, foreign military and, mm -hmm. and we've had a few here. Uh, and you mentioned language helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the first place I would suggest starting, there is an app called Bible.is, mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's actually put out by Faith Comes by Hearing, and the reason I like that one is when you go into the sort to look for languages, it's by country, you choose country, and then it's a drop-down list alphabetically of all the languages um, where scripture's available, and then when you click on it, usually you can find the audio and a link to the written. So that actually is the, it's the easiest one I know of. Um, heard of, heard of, mm -hmm. dot, Bible dot is. Actually one of the neat stories about that, um, a fellow was sitting at Denny's and the waitress came up and she had an obvious accent, you know, was, she, she wasn't local. And he said, so where are you from? And so she told him this country in Africa. So he pulls out the app and he shows her the list and she, you know, shows them which language he plays it for, she starts, you know, very um, culturally <laughs> appropriate excitement, runs and gets um, another server, brings them, her over and says, look for hers too, you know. And to, so it basically he was able to share scripture two people before he got his food. You know, <laughs> it's, God has given us great tools and great opportunities. And people 
who are outside of their home country. I don't know if you've ever traveled somewhere where you don't speak the language, how awkward that is. I know, sir, you have. Um, you know, having something in your, your, your language just fills your heart and you're excited about it. And so it's a great opportunity. No other questions? Yeah, go ahead. What do the children say when they open the shoe boxes? <laughs> um, if you can hear through the noise individuals, that's hard. Um, <laughs> there's just a lot of excitement. Right. They're, you know, they're pulling stuff out and they're looking and they're excited and they're chattering and they're showing each other. And, and most of the time, I couldn't tell you what they said because they're speaking in their village language that we don't speak anyway. Yeah, um, this is you, true. But you can tell when a child's excited. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They run around with stuff. It's pretty, pretty amazing to watch that. They don't always know what to do with That's some of those true. things, which is, is really kind of amusing that. for us. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and they're not really, they don't care if it's a boy girl thing particularly, yeah, no. where we might, you know, even grown men, I saw a grown guy with a holly hobby backpack and, <laughs> you know, he wouldn't be doing that, but you know, the guy was truly satisfied that he had been able to get this. Yeah, so. It didn't matter, yeah. Sorry, it was strawberry shortcake. Or strawberry shortcake. shortcake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just made me smile. Other questions we can answer. Both of us have roles in the Wycliffe headquarters, Wycliffe USA headquarters. Like I said, I do IT work. Um, and I just moved into that. On the field, I was aviation, and actually moved to our capital and did government relations and mm -hmm. basically management stuff, and came back here and got into IT management. And, uh, and, and, you and truthfully, job, because it's so expensive to hire well, IT people, yeah. <laughs> and we have trouble keeping them, yeah. Yeah, it's, with, it's super important yeah. that he's there, yeah. and it is, it is kind of a thing that's, it's nice that he's yeah. in, the building because of yeah, Wycliffe could not works. afford to hire all their IT people they need. Just with the amount yeah. IT people get paid these days, there's just no way we can we, do it. Yeah. yeah, even our paid staff kind of rotate in and out more because they get better offers. Or better offers. So, um, for me, um, this model that I've said of working independent, interdependently with with other partners. That really launched at the same time I was moving back to the U.S. And really, I saw God work in that for a season. Like, that was 2017. And for the next year, I was the entire Pacific team. We now have seven people. And as of last October, I moved into leading the team of partnership facilitators. So I'm leading a team of now, because they're not Wycliffe U.S. employees, most of them, they don't work for me. I just, which is an interesting, you know, so I, it's not management, but it is me supporting us working together well. So, um, so I have, I have like, it's seven regions, but I have nine people on my team right now. And most of them are better qualified than I am. They're leaders of organizations. They are very busy people, but they are as committed to the Bible translation movement in their region. And so, they commit to this interdependence to work alongside. Yes, sir. Have you ever run into any pioneer Bible translator? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, all the time. All the time. Um, matter of fact, Pioneers is one of the founding members of ETAN. They helped develop um, Render, which is the oral Bible translation software. Mm -hmm. And so we work with Pioneers folks all the time. Matter of fact, um, Good friends, Brian Paris. He's just moving from being in PNG to being over the whole Pacific. We were in a meeting last week. Well, that grandson and his family just left uh, a few months ago to go to Uganda. Okay. He's over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's it, 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 it is it's different. It, it takes a while for to get 
ingrained in the culture, and you really, believe it or not, never get totally there. Yeah. You get as close as you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he, he sent me a picture the other day. He said he was walking in town and had to leave the road because of cattle. Coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the rules are all different. But you know, if you if you if you relax and just enjoy that, mm -hmm. um, it's a whole lot of fun too. <laughs> so, so the translations that are on that Bible IS or the um, new version of the Bible, they come from Wycliffe, they come from Pioneers, they come from New F Tribes, which well, is now Ethnos 360. 360. I was trying to yeah. think of the new name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what's New Tribes called? Ethnos 360. Oh, okay. They changed their name about three years three ago, years but ago. we're still we're still yeah. the stuck in the past um <laughs> so all of those are collaborating together now and that's the thing that's really making the work amazing because we talk about it as the bible translation movement not just ours or theirs mm -hmm. kind of thing i guess it really is a problem where they don't have a written language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah right and and sometimes some of these are real small languages and yeah. sometimes the languages are dying off and so it may be a portion of the group that needs a translation, and maybe others are already speaking the other language in the area, in the region. And so we really do try and work with those who are discipling in the in that language mm -hmm. and say, so what's needed? And often, if it's not written, starting with oral translation means they get something sooner, but it also gives them a chance to figure out, well, what do we really need to serve our our people and help them grow deep in the Lord. And so it, it, it kind of, sometimes they'll go on and then they will do written. And sometimes they'll say, well, maybe we don't have enough people who are still speaking this language. This will help disciple and grow the people who do speak it. But this other part of our language community is going to speak another language because that's stronger for them. The world is changing. We, you know, there's no question about that. And so we are trying to first serve God's church. And the church may ask for different things to start the translation. I mean, if it's a more, uh, how do you say, it, liturgical church in the area, they may want their their readings that they do each Sunday translated before any of the books of the Bible complete. You know, things like that. And if that's what the church wants to do their work there. We're all for doing that, you know. So really just trying to, to be true servants. And more and more, it's, it's the church is participating in the work of translation. Mm -hmm. So it's not always an, a, someone come from outside to learn the language before they translate. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at different ways of training so that those who speak the language can be trained and take the lead and have technical support and Bible scholars to help check so that we work together, but they are still car they are carrying a lot more of the load. And that kind of makes sense if you think about the red jar. You have a maturing church in some of these places. Maybe not in that community, but maybe in this, the neighboring community. Any other questions? We'll give it back to you, Pastor. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Please remember to take the things in the back. Well, don't rush off. They'll be here to answer your qu other questions, and I know I've I've got a few. It's uh, uh, and 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 Jim, I understand what you were talking about. It takes all the things. When we were in Indonesia, I, I actually worked. Um, finance, treasurer, business management. Uh, and it was a blessing to me because I got to, all the money went through me. So I knew where it was going and what it was doing, but it took somebody to get it there. And, uh, and so mission work isn't always uh, in the trenches. It's, it's, it's got to have all the support that go along with it. And it does need the prayers of the church. And, and, and support. Uh, I'll dismiss us in prayer. Uh, uh, Randy, I'm gonna ask you to get the bucket out in the back. We're taking up a love offering tonight. And uh, uh, you know, they've come this way. They've got a, a mission project or a, a program over at Rocky Bayou this next week. 
And so uh, we're glad you're in town and uh, we took advantage of it, uh, Jim. And Michelle emailed me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, they're going to be here. And I said, great. I want you all to be here on Wednesday night and tell us about what's happening. And so there is a lot happening on the mission field. We have our missionary moments and we talk about getting the word of God out there and it's all through people. I've been preaching about that. God works through his people. He doesn't send an army of angels to do it. It's through his people. And it takes time, it takes finances, and it takes uh, technology, and it takes people knowing how to work that technology and to get the word out. And so it's, it's a big effort. I was excited to hear the way that different groups are coming together. Uh, I know when we were on the mission field, it was us and other mission organizations, and we were not in competition with one another because there are lots of lost souls around the world. We're not in competition with churches in our, in our town here. We got people across the street that needs to hear Jesus, hear, hear about Jesus. And so, um, I also, before I close in prayer, want to do mention uh, a new sermon series I'm starting Sunday. And it'll go for at least uh, four or five weeks. I'm going to be talking about our world view. And why, one reason why our world is going the way it is, is because of the view of the world that people have taken. And there's so much in, uh, involved with that. But I'll be preaching from the word and see what the word has to tell us about our world view. But we'll go from there. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father. We're thanking you for the work that uh, Jim and Michelle have been doing and their organizations and organizations like them. And Lord, we heard from the Smiths and, and their grandson that is overseas. And Lord, we thank you for the churches that support them. And Lord, I pray that, uh, I pray that uh, we can do our part Lord, that we'll take that green bead, and Lord, that we'll remember there are those around the world that have never heard the name of Jesus. And Lord, that we might have a part, some small part, in putting the word out there, because your command says you shall be witnesses to me, to the uttermost parts of the world. And Lord, may we be faithful in, in doing so and supporting those that are out there. Lord, we ask that you watch over us as we go. Lord, that you guide us, protect us. And Lord, that all that we say and do, that Jesus be glorified. And we pray all of these things in the holy and blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And God bless you all.